Hey, what's up everybody? Dr. Ray here and today we're talking about chat GPT. Um, I want to talk about its use and potential use in education, some things that uh, teachers or faculty in higher ed and K-12 to are going to need to look out for when using this tool. Um, talk about some of the advantages and ways that we can use it ourselves as educators and some of the cool things it does. Um, if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, it is an AI tool. Um, almost think of it like the text or word version um, of Amazon like Alexa or Apple Watches Siri. I gotta make sure my watch and all my devices just didn't turn on there. Um, but basically it's a text version that's a little smarter than them and does a better job of creating things and you probably heard heard about this tool um, but it is created by a company called OpenAI, um, and they've created this tool chat gpt optimizing language models for dialogue we're going to show you how the tool works and talk a little bit about it um, and show some of the cool things that it does all right so are you ready to go into the tool and talk about it? And then we'll get to some of the disadvantages as well. But I just want to show you the tool. So first thing is you go to their website, you simply click this try button right at the top of the screen. Click try and boom, it opens up the tool. It's going to look like this when it opens up. Um, and you can start typing it to do stuff like write a piece of or like write a Python script asking for a username and password for a website and you type something in you ask it to do something and it takes a couple seconds and kind of thinks and then it starts doing and here we go so here is an example and it has written the code for me and I can actually copy the code and use it. Which is pretty cool. It's still going, still going. But anyway, you get the example. It it actually writes code. And I'm like memorized. Like I'm sitting here like just like, wow. Like sitting here like watching it. Um, and you can type whatever you want and copy the code and go ahead and use it because it starts to write it for you. Now, obviously, you have to fill in your information. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. Like, it does some stuff. So let me show you some of the stuff that, like, I started to, like, work on examples of stuff that what you as a teacher, like, need to watch out for. So first of all, for homework, this thing can do homework for students in some ways. Um, so you have to be a little careful. For example, I just said, write a paragraph describing why the Bay of Pigs was a turning point in the Cold War. Um, I don't know why I, I was a political science major as an undergrad and came up with this political science question for some odd reason. But you can see it gives you, I, it gives you a nice paragraph about this. I then asked it, I gave it a math word problem, like an algebra word problem. A student chose a number, multiplied it by two, then subtracted 138 from the result and got 102. What was the number he chose? And they give you, they tell you how they solved the problem, and then they give you the actual response. So not only is it giving you, like for a math problem, just the answer, it tells you, gives you the work. Like it tells you the reasoning why and actually shows you. So um, that's something for, educators to watch out for. Um, then I said write two multiple choice and one true false question for the following paragraph. So I took this paragraph that I wrote earlier and asked it to write multiple choice and true false questions. So how cool is this? As a teacher, like when you get some kind of piece of content that you want to show the kids, like you can actually come up with questions. Like it can come up with questions. Like if you're creating, obviously a lot of teachers content is given to them but not always um, my wife's a k-12 educator i'm in higher ed a lot of our content is is not given to us or ways to assess it especially like informally are not given to us so being able to create sheets on the fly like questions and stuff is a really cool use case for chat gpt now obviously you want to read through here and say are these questions appropriate are they written correct correctly you know but it's the idea generation it's I, okay i've created these three questions here can i use any of them can i use pieces of them what do i need to change is much easier than starting from scratch so it's a time saver which those of you in education know you need because you don't have any time so that's awesome 
All right, then I just, for some more fun, like asked it to do some, I said, create a worksheet with questions on the planets for seventh graders, like just see what it come up with. And it came up with 10 questions about the planets, which I think these are probably too easy for seventh graders. My son's in sixth grade and these are more like for my fourth grader. But anyway, um, it does like help you generate, like you can literally just type it like to do stuff. Um, on the scary side, students can take your question that you've written that they're supposed to do for homework and come up with a, an answer for math, for really any subject that you're trying to do, unless you're having them like really create something that's not text, which teachers are going to have to start doing. Um, the student's going to be able to copy, get something from here. Now let's talk a little bit, um, oh, I, I want to talk about the downfalls of this and how you can, as an educator, can potentially stop that kind of thing from happening. One other cool thing I had to do, I said create a Res, write a resume for a student that just graduated with a teaching degree from my college where I teach UNCW. Actually did an okay job. Name, contact, objective, education, experience. Like actually gave like some okay things that they would have done. They just made up volunteer teaching assistant, skills, certifications, references. Honestly, like these are the kind of resumes I get when I tell my students to write a resume and kind of what it's actually not a bad starting point. Like this is not bad. Like this is a starting point for someone writing their resume. So they're not starting from scratch, like copy and paste this, go into word and fill in your information. And like, you've got a cool starting point. I mean, you can get that from Google as well, but it's kind of cool. Cause I, I could actually type in my details up here and say, write a resume, like with using this job and this job and like really get specific and it'll write it and format it for me. Like that's awesome. Okay, now let's start to get into the some of the. So, first of all, let's say a student's going to use this. How are you going to know um, as a teacher? And then let's talk about the disadvantages of the tool. So, how are you going to know? Well, I want to say that, like, for something like this, this math problem, it's going to be kind of hard to know that they used it or not. Um, for like written work, like papers and stuff, is it going to be hard? yes and no so here's something interesting so like i asked it a question write a paragraph describing why the bay of pigs was a turning point for the cold war well i decided to write that paragraph ask it the same question again and guess what it spit out the same paragraph and i've tested this multiple times with this tool i can ask this question 20 times over multiple days it's going to spit out the same paragraph so what does that mean if you ask your students a question and say, write a one page paper, a position paper on whatever, you can, and let's say you get two students that come in with the same answers because they use this tool. So you're gonna catch them. If you just check your, and of course it's like another thing, check, but eventually probably we're gonna have a tool that like checks, this will just be another database that your cheating stuff is checked through. Um, at least that we use in higher ed check for like, uh, authentication of um, digital work like if the student wrote it or not like it'll probably is going to start checking tools like this um, and we're going to see like did the software write it so i think i think it's going to be harder for students to just copy and paste if a teacher's looking for it especially if you have multiple students copy and paste it'll be simple to catch them um, but i don't think it's as easy as this is going to write my papers for me um, it can give students ideas and I think that's great and in a lot of ways I think this is like you know having a calculator in your pocket it's like it's helping me write helping me generate ideas but we don't want it to be the assessment tool so we as educators might need to figure out what are some different creative ways to assess our students um, that still meet our learning objectives and maybe we don't have them do 100% like answering questions like this because they can potentially get ideas and use a tool like this to really do some of the work for them that we need them to be able to do. Um, so I think being creative in that way will will be helpful. But I, I don't think the tool's perfect for them to just copy and create a bunch of stuff in class. Um, some other things I want to point out like disadvantages about the tool. So there was that. Um, a, you do have to check all the information to make it's correct. Um, you can see when I did like the first question here, like write a Python script, said this content may violate our content policy. If you believe this is an error, please submit your feedback. So 
this tool, I asked the same question yesterday and it didn't give me this message. So what does that tell me? It tells me that this tool is very much, if I scroll down here, free research preview. This tool is a preview. It's a beta version. It's, you're we're testing it. This is owned by a company, a company who for other products charges who the, I don't know if it was the president of this company or, but it was one of like the high up, like senior, senior people at the company um, on Twitter. Someone asked, will this tool always be free? And they said, well, we're going to need to figure out a way to monetize it. So things are changing really rapidly. And if you're watching this video in like a few months from now, you might be like, well, wait, that tool costs money or that tool has this, we can't use it. So things are changing. This isn't owned by like a university or government. This is owned by a company. So know that like, very similar to Google or some YouTube or whatever else, like they can change things, um, which could be good or bad. I'm hoping that what happens to this tool is that they change things like Google, where like on the side here, like advertisements and they're paid through ads. Like that's fine. I can deal with ads for a free tool. Like I got to pay somehow. Um, so if it's a bunch of ads that they want to pay for like fine but there's going to be something so expect changes in the tool as well so keep in mind like this is a free research preview that this is a company that owns this so there's going to be those kind of changes that you're going to see very shortly so those are some of like the big like overarching like questions um, but where does this leave us for the future and what kinds of things are we going to see um, as educators i feel like we put out one fire and there's a 10 more um, you know, it's the same thing with like hacking and everything else. Like you shut down one method of cheating and there's 20 others. Like, you know, so it's just another thing for us to watch out for because this technology isn't going away. This technology is getting better and better. So how do we keep up with it? How do we ensure that what we're doing, um, isn't going to make it easy for a student to just copy their work? And then you get to the question where is all our, all my students going to have access to this kind of thing um, and those kind of questions. Are they even familiar with it? Are they talking about it and knowing their students and all that kind of stuff that goes into that? Um, I can tell you that like my students in elementary school and middle school aren't aware of this tool right now. Um, that's not on their radar. My sixth grader, I asked him about it and he's like, I don't know what that even is. So, you know, it's still not there yet, but in months to years from now this could be google because if i ask all my kids what google is they know they all know what youtube is so it could be chat gpt or it's going to be something they're going to be aware that there's this thing to do that so as educators we're just going to have to be mindful and pay attention and just keep up with it but i think we will um i have i have lots of faith in us <laughs> um to say the least but it's a pretty cool tool and i think as an educator you can find some cool uses for it like you got to write an email. You're not sure how to word it. Give some test, test runs on this. Uh, it created a resume for me. It's I can use it to create quiz questions and stuff. Like I can use it to create content for my classes, like generate some cool ideas. I can use it to write code, generate like scripts of code and stuff like that. Um, so it does some cool things. Um, so take advantage of it. Go in and play around. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what issues you've encountered and some of the ways that you think it could be used. Love to hear it all. Later.